Hello everyone and welcome to today's build, to which we'll be covering the Horthos Z exotic chest piece for the Titan. Now this exotic is rather simple but unique like all things, and I haven't seen much talk about the exotic within the community at all. I've seen his name here and there, but not a lot else, which I think might be because no well known content creator has broken it down for the masses as of yet. It's underrated to say the least, and I've been having a lot of fun with it, so let's change that. By the end of the video, I will show you how to use the exotic effectively for both normal and endgame content, why you should use it more often compared to other exotics, and why this build in mind will grant you a wide range of flexibility that you can modify with ease. But you know what else grants you max flexibility in all content and is underrated to the general masses? This channel right here. So if you enjoy the content then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more content like this in the future, as it would really help me out. So to start, we'll be using the Behemoth subclass combined with the following exotic to bring out the best that the subclass can offer. The whole force ability is simple, it allows you to create a stasis barricade instead of a normal one, while also granting you bonuses in weapon reload, speed, stability and range to all. And that's what makes it interesting to boot as the barricade can play into your build easily and grant you a huge amount of benefits from the get go depending on what you have equipped it. For example, for my aspects I have Diamond Lance which allows me to throw a Ice Lance at a target which can freeze them on impact. I then have Tectonic Harvest which creates status shards from glaciers or frozen combatants that get destroyed. This will give me melee energy back but also energy as well when combined with Elemental Shards mod. For Fragments we then have Whispers of Shards which will boost our grenade region for a short period. Whispers of Fissures which will increase the size and damage of our Shattered Stasis. Whispers of Rhyme which will grant us a small amount of overshield from shards collected. Whispers of Chain which will grant us a damage resistance while near a stasis crystal or frozen target. And lastly Whispers of Conduction which allows stasis shards to track to you. What the subclass customization offers is the ability for us to always have an overshield on demand and damage reduction while near anything frozen. While grenades will do its part, the whole force ability of creating stasis glaciers will allow us to have three layers of protection no matter where we are and this is great if you plan to play end game and want to survive as long as possible. From here, our stats will need to follow suit as well. We have 18 resilience, 19 discipline and 16 strength and all of these are supported via extra mods or incendiary abilities that will further enhance them. For mods, as an example, we have elemental shards which turns our shards into wells, explosive well maker which allows anything explosive to produce a solo well and kill, a font of wisdom for that plus 50 in intellect, the Font of Might for the plus 25% in stasis weapon damage, and Well of Life which will grant us improved health regen for a few seconds. From the looks of it, it's designed as a basic defensive build through and through, but once played and used properly, it will offer players the opportunity to survive tough content all the way to GM level, and it's a great way of preventing yourself from getting one shot snipered, or body by a champion, etc. And you can use this offensively as well, so don't think its usage just stops there. Now weaponry you're going to want a stasis based one and a weapon that's great at clearing out large groups of adds in one go and also destroying glaciers in go. To start we have the Perseus Deep Scout with shoot to loot and headstone which makes it a great weapon to use if you ever play endgame content as the damage is pretty good but the ability to create glaciers on demand via headstone can make a major difference. Remember, with the following whispers used, we can get back a ton of benefits from simply creating one and also use them as an extra damage for anyone that gets near them. It may fire slow and a bit clunky at first, but this is only for PvE only, so I think we can get away with it. Runner up, we have the Crate AR with Substance and Headstone, which is another fantastic weapon that all stasis users should aim to have. For Sanctuary, we have the 4 Bearings Grenade Launcher with Relentless and Chain Reaction, and this has been a very popular weapon for all players no matter the content they are in. The fact that it can roll with Chain Reaction makes Add Duty a lot more easier since one kill is generally all you need to do maximum damage to everyone surrounding it. On top of that, combining this with Stasis allows us to create landmines with anything frozen thanks to the fragments being used. With both the stasis and chain reaction explosion, this will trigger the explosive well make mod and allow us to have well of life active for as long as we can sustain it. Anything explosive wise is best for stasis builds as that extra damage coming from them can make a difference between clearing out rooms quickly and defeating a major boss with minions in one go. For heavy we have the Palomai B rocket launcher with impulse amplifier and lasting impression 
and this is another great rocket launcher to keep for its ease of use, ease of craft, and just amazing damage output it can offer with or without stasis build in mind. Although a machine gun such as recurrent impact from this season might be a great alternative to use once next season comes and all machine guns get a damage buff, I can see this also fitting in quite snugly in the fortification style of the build. Plus it will have more ammo to work with, so you'll never truly run out if you have the right mods on. Now this is more of a personal choice to keep in mind and not something that you need to have on just now. For stats as mentioned, we need 3 key areas to be covered for the build. Resilience, Discipline and Strength. All 3 of these areas will offer us the needed cooldown that will grant us the ability to keep going even without the use of weapons being used. The most important stat though is Resilience, as this will allow us to activate the core frost as much as we can, however we like. For this stat, 70 to 100 is ideal, as you want to get this active as many times as you like, since we won't be using the glacial grenades so often. As it's part of the Titan class, this stat will naturally recover very quickly, so 80 is a good spot to aim for. In terms of mods, we have already covered with such things as elemental shards, which is generally all you'll need. You can add on the absolution or distribution mods if you wish, but it is only if you have the space to do so. And to be honest with status subclass and its flexibility, I don't think you're gonna need anything else from here. Grenades at 90 is more to help with ad control than anything else, and luckily the dust for grenades offer us a relatively fast cooldown, which we can use extensively with our gear. Glaciers can also be used, but I personally don't see the point if you have your status barricades available. Ideally, you're not going to need anything grenade focused as much here, since discipline is very easy to get up, and in our instance, we can lower it down to 70 if you feel the grenades aren't going to be that necessary. Just remember, all the benefits you're getting from subclass fragments will help make your grenades feel more impactful no matter where you go. The strength now is our lowest at 60 and for good reasons. When we have the tectonic harvest aspect active, this will grant us shards which will be converted into wells thanks to the element shards mod. However, the aspects gives us back melee energy for each frozen or glacier type object destroyed by us. So by utilizing our stasis barricades, we can produce an infinite amount in seconds of each other. This helps out majorly as it reduces the need for more melee based mods to fill in the gap and this honestly does a lot of work for us. Left over wise we have the Homolux Siphon mod for producing orbs of power with matching elemental gear, Psionic Fortune 2 which increases our land tank weapon origin trait, Rocket and Grenade Launcher Scavenger mods for more ammo for the following two, and a Lucan Finisher mod for getting heavy ammo back via Finishing Champions or Lucan Hive. Now as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For Head we have Discipline, Silent Forging 2, Harmonic Siphon, an Elemental Shards mod, Arm we have Discipline, Fastball, an Explosive Wellmaker mod, Chest we have Strength, Firmashot Plating, Concussive Dampener and Bond of Wisdom mod, Leg we have Discipline, Grenade Launcher Scavenger mod, Rocket Launcher Scavenger mod and Font of Might mod, Mark we have Maya Discipline, Lucan Finisher and Well of Life mod. Now this has to be one of the best Titan exotics to be introduced in Witch Queen that not many people talk about whatsoever. The exotic is incredibly simple in design and as it currently stands, it serves to make the barricades actually good while also allowing you to set up what makes Behemoth work. The barricade instantly procs chains for a nice 40% PvE damage resist and can be broken for shards to get charged with light or wells as long as you have the right conversion mods and you can even get the bonus grenade energy from Whispers Shards if you run that. What makes this exotic great is just how incorporated it is within our barricades, since every Titan main will be using a barricade when they can. We can use it both offensively and defensively, and combining our abilities with other stasis users can make the build even more chaotic for the most hardest content in mind. Now a major detail that most people also glossed over in the Witch Queen patch notes is that status crystals now take 90% less damage from PvE combatants, meaning your dreams of building an impenetrable castle with your behemoth can now come true. Both endgame PvE and PvP can be made easy when you have the full team doing so. But I can also see why people also are hesitant on the exotic. Using Heart of Inmost Light offers better synergy in general compared to Hallfrost, and only because it actively regens faster and gives you a damage boost as well. This might be the reason why not so many people fawn over it, since we have an exotic that already does what Hallfrost does, but better. Of course, depending on playstyle, I can see Hallfrost being more useful if you play defensive and safe, 
And this is important to keep in mind when compared to it harder in most light, as it's quite hard to avoid an exotic that has always been better from the get-go. This however should never ruin your fun, and I recommend you give this build an exotic a try in all content, as maybe this season or next, I can see this exotic being really really popular. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.